Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church today. Uh, I want to go over a few of the announcements in your bulletin. The flowers today are presented to the glory of God and in loving memory of Sue Holdren for her first heavenly birthday, which would be this week, from the Senior Choir in Westminster Bells. There will be Lenten luncheon and services this week on March 9th at noon. Home communion will also be celebrated this week. Choir practices will be at their normal times on Thursday. The Stephen ministers will meet tomorrow evening at 6.30 in the manse, and there will be a meeting of the worship committee uh, Thursday, March 10th at 6 o'clock in the parlor. An announcement not in your bulletin, um, that there will be a hometown wedding showcase at the Eureka today from 12 to 4. Are there any other announcements that weren't in the bulletin? Then let us prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude.
days and nights. Rain fell and waters covered the earth. For 40 years, the people wandered, seeking the land of promise. Moses spent 40 days on the mountain, learning God's commands. Elijah traveled 40 days in the wilderness to hear from God. Jonah cried to the people of Nineveh, repent in 40 days. Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days. Lead us, Lord, from death to life. Now let us pray the prayer of adoration together. Gracious God, on our way in the wilderness, guide us by your word through these 40 days and minister to us with your Holy Spirit so that we may be reformed, restored, and renewed. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. <laughs> sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds we have been healed so let us acknowledge our failure and disobedience 
and return to the Lord with penitence and faith. Let us pray the prayer of confession together. Gracious and loving Father, as we begin this season of Lent, preparing to witness once again the depth of your love poured out on the cross, help us not to turn away from your sorrow. Help us not to miss the sacred in this world so driven by sin and selfishness. Help us to take the time to be transformed. During the weeks before Christmas, we celebrated the anticipation of the coming of the Christ child with candles. One by one during Advent, we lighted candles of peace, hope, joy, and love. All this culminated on Christmas Eve when we lighted the Christ candle of white. The light of the Christ shining into the world living in our midst, coming forth to save us, inviting us to his warmth. Today, we begin another season, the season of Lent. Lent is the time before Easter. It is, in some ways, it is the opposite of Advent. It is a sober season, a time to prepare for Christ's passion. We remember that these were his days of rejection, suffering, conflict, and betrayal. Those days end with the extinguishing of the Christ candle that was lighted at Christmas. Let us turn again with Christ to these weeks of passion and preparation. We extinguish one candle this week as we begin a sober season and remember Christ's words from the cross, Today you will be with me in paradise.
have been given out, at least for my entire lifetime. At one, at one point they were globes that showed the world, but I think our countries keep changing enough that they got caught up in that. One great hour of sharing. You see those words? This is the Easter offering, and it's the offering that goes to people in need because we share Jesus with people. Do you know how to share Jesus? Well, one of the ways is to give. Because if we give our change all through the season of Lent, and then it gets sent, it goes to places like where the war is right now, in Ukraine. But we can actually have a part. That's the whole where your coins go. Yeah. And usually, I know when I was your age, this stayed on the kitchen table. And my father, when he came home from work, would put some change in it. My mom, after she bought groceries, would put some change in it. And even with my allowance, I would put some change in it. You think you can collect money for the world this year, this year in Lent? You think you can do that? Yeah. It's a fun thing to do. And the fish is an important symbol. It's an early symbol of the church because a Christian could draw half of a fish, and if the other person completed the fish, 
They knew it was safe to talk to them because it was dangerous to be a Christian in those days. Mm -hmm. So you have a fish and you have an opportunity to help people. You think you can do that? Yeah. Okay. You can. <laughs> it's what keeps me from coughing. <laughs> okay, so let's pray. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you that you give us opportunity to help others. Even at our youngest age, we still can be part of your work. Help us to use these banks and the one great hour of sharing offering to help others in need. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you all. Bye. Have fun with the banks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
and we did what is known as an Irish wake. And it didn't always happen before or after, sometimes it was one or the other. But we always gathered together as a family, from the youngest to the oldest, and they would take the doors off the hinges, put them on sawhorses, cover them with newspaper, and when the food was ready, they would come with the great big boiling pot and they would pour it out on the newspaper and there would be crabs and crawfish and shrimp and potatoes and onions and lemons, all kinds of spice, New Orleans crab boil spice, which is unique. And we would eat and eat. The adults drank German sodas, the kids drank Coca-Cola or Barks root beer. And all of that time, we spent sharing about the person that had gone on to heaven. It was a fun time. It was a sad time in that we missed that person, but it was a wondrous time, especially to be a child at that table. Paul had some very serious concerns about the people at Corinth. These two passages reflect his concerns that the people that were brand new converts, who weeks earlier had been pagan worshipers, had been sacrificing food to idols and then eating it, and he was deeply concerned that they would take this lightly, the way they'd come to take the idol foods lightly. And he wanted them not to be confused. He wanted them to have some basic training on how to approach the Lord's Supper. Our views of the Lord's Supper in many ways theologically reflect our views of the gospel. In fact, it is taught in seminary that as the table goes, so goes the gospel. And that's important. For most of us, we can think of warm family gatherings, whatever they might be in your family tradition. And if we think about gathering at this table in that way, it brings us closer. It's able to touch our hearts. Now, the key word in the second passage that I read is the word participation. In participation with Jesus and in participation with the family of faith, the body of Christ. Now, we want to look at this word, and if you translate it in the Greek, it's the word koinonia. And most of our lives, we've known that this is the word that means fellowship. And I know, at least based on my feelings and those I've visited with since the pandemic began, we miss fellowship. We truly miss it. But fellowship is more than just coffee and cookies, hugging people and visiting. It is something actually really deep because it is fellowship with Christ as we take the bread and the juice. It's also fellowship with each other. And we symbolize this in different ways. When we do intinction, we come forward for communion. And that is one particular way we get close to Jesus. When we do communion as we will do it today, and we take the elements and hold them until everyone has been served, we are participating in the body. Both are equally important that we come to Jesus at his invitation, that we share Jesus together in Koinonia. Now, we can have fellowship with the Father, 
but we can't have it without fellowship with each other. That's why our spirituality <coughs> can be very personal, but it's not private. <coughs> hmm. Sorry. I don't think I can. It's only an outline, but I think I'll show you where. Friends, on Ash Wednesday, we celebrated the Lord's Supper here in the sanctuary by coming forward and also receiving the ashes. When we take communion by intinction, we are symbolizing our coming to Christ. When we take communion, as we will today with the elders, bringing us the elements and holding them until we all have been served, we are symbolizing our participation in the body of Christ, the church. These are both acts of konoya, participation with Christ, in participation with the church and his body, fellowship in its purest form. And isn't it so appropriate that we do this with our church family? Safe to say we missed fellowship more than anything with the pandemic, keeping us at home, and we could not worship in person. Think of the Ukrainian churches worshiping at this time, going underground since the war in Russia has occurred. Think of the kanoya of participation with Christ for them, in participation with one another in Christ's body. It is indeed a universal concept. We were made to be in fellowship with Christ and we were made to be in fellowship with his body, the church. So today, as we celebrate communion, think about your fellowship with Jesus and think about your fellowship with each other. Let us gather around table. God's word read and proclaimed, now let us state, state together what we believe using the affirmation of faith. What does it mean to eat the crucified body and drink the shed blood of Christ? It means not only to embrace with a believing heart all the sufferings and death of Christ, and thereby to obtain the forgiveness of sins and life eternal but moreover also to be so united more and more to his sacred body 
by the Holy Spirit, who dwells both in Christ and in us, that although he is in heaven and we on earth, we are nevertheless flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone, and live and are governed forever by one spirit, as members of the same body are by one soul. <laughs> Unto him who has loved us and washed us from all of our sin in his own blood, to him be honor and glory and dominion, both now and forevermore. I invite you to hear the words of Jesus. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest, even unto your souls. I am the bread of life, saith the Lord. Those that come to me will never hunger. Those who believe in me will never thirst. Blessed are all who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It is the custom in this particular part of the body of Christ that when we are served, we hold the elements until each person has received first the bread and then the juice. It's also customary to call the person next to you by name and actually really serve it to them. So they feel both Christ's presence and the body's presence. So I invite you to hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they have been de delivered to us by the Apostle Paul. Paul wrote, I have received that which also I deliver unto you, that our Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup 
And as he poured, he said, this cup is the new covenant, sealed with my blood. This do you as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup until the Lord comes again. As our Lord Jesus that night took bread and wine, we take these elements of bread and grape juice from all common uses set aside for this holy use and mystery. And as on that night he went before the Father to pray and praise God, we also go before the Father to pray and praise Gracious and loving Father, we ask that we would see Christ when we are taking this communion, that we would participate, that we would be in fellowship with him. We also ask, dear Lord, that together as the body of Christ, as the family that is this church, and all those out there online. We ask that we also in that will be in fellowship together as we are in fellowship with you. Take this time, Lord, to touch our hearts as we lean into you in this Lenten season. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.
This is the body of Christ, broken for each of us. We do this in remembrance of him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
beloved in the Lord. This is the blood of Christ shed for all of our sins. Thanks be to God. While we are still gathered at Christ's table, we have some joys to celebrate. Ollie is home from the hospital and doing so much better. We need to keep praying for everything to be resolved. And if she still needs the gallbladder surgery, once she's well enough for that as well. Carol Moore's sister, Norma, went very well through her surgery. And I think Carol will be home on Monday. Uh, we have a praise that Scotty did really well in spite of getting COVID. He is, he's well. We do have in our concerns, Chuck Replogle has been in a lot of pain and they're not going to be able to give him the next shot until the 9th of March. So pray those days go quickly for him. Also, we've been asked to pray for Mary Bell McMillan by Jason McMillan. We need to continue to pray for Troy Butterworth, for the family of Leo Kalinowski, in particular Shirley, for Toy Smith, that's Diane's daughter, for the family and friends of Hunter Reynolds, that's the 11-year-old that was killed in the car accident, for the people of Ukraine, most especially. I know the news this morning was basically the ceasefire failed because the Russians kept shooting and people could not be evacuated by the Red Cross that they had intended to get through today. Please pray for them. Pray for those people that are trying to leave, that they can actually get out with their children. We're also in the Presbytery asked to pray for the Clearfield congregation and my husband and for the Committee on Ministry and Elder Nancy Bostain. Let us go to God in prayer. O most gracious and loving Father, we thank you that once again you have fed us at your table. We are given such a glorious glimpse of what it will be like to sit at table with you in the kingdom of heaven. We live for that day. In the meantime, Lord, we thank you that we fellowship with you and that because of you, we fellowship with one another as we take communion together. We lift up the world to you this day. It is a world torn by war in one precious country. We lift up all the aid, all the everything every other country is doing to help. May it get there, may it truly help. We know that Jesus said there would always be wars, but Lord, we do ask for you to intervene and use us in mighty ways. We pray also for all of these folks that have been on our prayer list, this has been a rough end to 2021 and beginning of 2022. We've lost very precious people to your kingdom, but it's also just been hard. Lord, please bless us and help us to be able to leave this table renewed, refreshed, and ready to serve you faithfully and bring you into others' lives. And now, O oh Lord, we ask that you would hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
worship now continues as we bring before God our tithes, our offerings, and most especially ourselves. Gracious and loving Father, for the abundance of your blessings and your gifts, we give you thanks. We offer these gifts and our lives as an expression of our love and devotion to you each day. In Jesus' name, amen.
gathered here to remember what it is to be God's people. We are so loved and we are forgiven. Let us go into the world this week knowing that we are in fellowship with Christ and one another. And now may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon each of us and abide in our hearts both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.